Daniel. Okay, we're on. So introduce yourself and tell them what you do here. Okay, my name is George Estevez. Uh, I come from the Dominican Republic and I work here at the National Museum of the American Indian where I'm the workshops coordinator um, and, uh, and I'm also a Taino researcher. So for those who don't know or people who are hearing this for the first time, who were the Taino and where did they come from? Well, the Taino people are, are, are an indigenous group of people that emerged on the island um, and those are our ancestors today. Now, the ancestors of our ancestors originally came from the Yucatan uh, about 7,000 years ago, um, seafaring people started crossing into Cuba and later to the Dominican Republic and then Puerto Rico. And then later, about 4,000 years ago, Arawakan-speaking people from the Orinoco River Basin in Venezuela um, began island hopping through, you know, the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, etc., etc. And it was a mixture of all these different peoples that gave rise to uh, the people that today we call Taino. Now, the Taino people never called themselves Indians. Right. This was a term that was applied to them by the Spanish. Um, and they never called themselves Taino either. This is uh, an archaeological term. The, the word comes from the Taino language, but Tainos did not call themselves Tainos back then. We use the term today as an all-encompassing term to, um, uh, which uh, um, sheds light on, on the culture. It's of, like, of, uh, like describing like it's, uh, exactly. a movement. Right, and it describes the, it describes the, 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 the culture of, of, the, of the area. Because when the Spanish arrived in the Caribbean, um, from the Bahamas to Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico to Jamaica, and that triangle, um, and all the islands in there, there was basically one culture, one culture area. Mm. Um, and the Taino language was like the lingua franca of the region. That was all the most predominant language. There were some other languages as well, like Siguayo, Macorí, and Siboney. But the Taino language was the one that was spoken by all the natives of, of the region. So um, even though the Tainos were not unified under one group, but today we do um, put them together as, as, as a group. Anywhere else. Uh, so what's this whole thing with the with the myth that the Taino became extinct. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? And how does um, DNA play a role into it? Well, the myth of extinction uh, is one that arises, first of all, from a, from a point of, from, uh, a person's point of view. Uh, in this case, the historians. Um, uh, I think that uh, if you're looking for a pure Taino today, if that is a real standard, then there are no Tainos, because Taino people are mixed. But by that same logic, then um, there are no Africans and no, no, and no white people in the Caribbean either because mm -hmm. all, everybody in the Caribbean is basically mixed. Right. Um, so um, the myth of extinction basically began due to several things. First of all, the Taino people did not have the uh, immunities to the diseases that came with the Spanish. And so a lot of people did die off. But like, one thing that needs to be understood is that the only people that were really dying were the ones that were living around the Spanish centers. Spanish towns. The Spanish never controlled any one island in its entirety. So therefore, um, there was always mountain hiding places where a lot of Tainos hid, and, it's, and that's very well documented. Um, another thing that, that did off the Taino is, is the census records. The census, uh, the census takers um, until 1750 had a very particular way of taking census counts. Basically, someone would get in the middle of a town and they would spread their arms out and they would count how many houses were um, in that expanse, uh, and, okay. and then and then more or less guesstimate, and then they would do this like in a circle. Um, so the Spanish could not possibly count people that were hiding from them. For example, how many illegal Dominicans are living in Puerto Rico? Nobody knows. These people are hiding from in plain sight. Um, that created the myth of extinction is the fact that when the Spanish um, converted someone to Catholicism these people were no longer considered Indians. And this practice actually came with them from Spain uh, because uh, from 1478 to 1492, the Spanish began, officially began the Spanish Inquisition where they were basically murdering Jews. Mm. Um, and any Jew that wanted to, to escape uh, these atrocities and, and, and this fate would simply have to convert to Catholicism. And these people became known as conversos. So once you became converted to Catholicism, you were no longer considered a Jew. This practice came with the Spanish um, when they landed in the Americas. So therefore, once an Indian became converted to Catholicism, he was no longer considered an Indian. Now he was 
more civilized, um, supposedly, and uh, and therefore not Indian. So all these different things, you know, there wasn't a, 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 an agenda let's exterminate these people in that in that sense. But all these different things gave rise to this myth, mm. uh, and the myth is so strong that when you when you look at the material culture that survives, the religiosity that survives, people will always downplay it. Um, or, or simply um, ignore it because since that's not supposed to be there, then these things cannot possibly be, you know, uh, ha ha be relevant in today's society. But the fact is that when you look deep into what is culture, what is material culture uh, in, the Car in the Caribbean, in, in particular the, the larger islands, you find that there's a l hundreds and hundreds of cultural expressions that have survived to this day, and that's basically what I specialize in. That's that's one, what I like to to uh, to investigate and uh, compare and contrast. I, I find a lot of the cultural expressions are similar to people from the Yucatan and from South America, and we still practice these things today. Explain to the people what's going on with the legis with the legislation that you just passed in DR. Well, basically, in the Dominican Republic, they just passed a law. Actually, it was a legis it was a proposed legislation which actually passed into law where they eradicated the, the, the term Indian color from the Dominican, um, from all official Dominican documents. Um, and it's a bit controversial. Uh, for one thing, um, the term Indian color was always one that was, uh, that was wrong uh, in the sense that uh, Indians don't have a particular color. Right. Um, but that was the only thing that was left to us as far as any kind of Indian identity. Um, being the Dominican Republic that we're a mixture of all three races of um, the Spanish, the African, and, and the Indian, right. um, that was the only thing that was left since the Taino people were declared extinct a long time ago, which of course, you know, it's false. Um, so, uh, so, they, so they proposed this law and they passed it, but what they did was when they passed it is that they decided to drop the whole Indian term and only leave us with two options, basically. It's a, um, to say, you, you could only say that you're Spanish, or rather white, or black, or a mixture of the two. Hmm. Now this poses a big, a, a big problem. For example, if you are of Native American descent, um, that option is no longer clear to you. Right. Um, to confuse matters even worse, there are over 60,000 Chinese people on the island. Right. Um, they would have to either put down white or, or black as well. So you see, it's a very limiting term. I, I feel that they should have put all the options and let people decide for themselves to what the Spanish described the Tainos as doing as well. They had water cults and stone cults, like the Samis, where people will actually feed um, certain rocks that have certain shapes and, 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 uh, and they keep them in a, in a bowl of water or etc. etc. And these are all really old practices. Um, none of these things have ever been actually been investigated or studied, you know, um, hardly. And, and uh, I think that that's something that, that that's a, it's a new field, I think, something new to, 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 to investigate. I think once you, when you, once you cast out that whole, the Taino became extinct, and you can compare what the people are doing in Maguana today with what the Taino said then, you see the correlation, you see the, the connection really clear. Um, that, that is just what I think. So, kind of get into the kind of work that you do here at the Smithsonian. Well, here at the Smithsonian, I, I, I'm the workshop coordinator, so I bring in different native people from North and South America and the Caribbean to come and do um, workshops on everything from uh, baskets, beadwork, etc., etc., all kinds of uh, material culture. Um, when I'm not doing that, then I'm researching um, Taino culture, history, um, but mostly uh, cultural practices, that's what I look for. Um, uh, food ways that we still have. I have a list of all these different foods um, that we make in the Dominican Republic that are of Taino extraction. Um, and, uh, and the list always grows, you know, you always find somebody that, is, that you meet from a little village in the middle of nowhere and they'll know something that, that you've never heard of before, but, mm. but there's so much there to, to discover. So, is there any way uh, the people out there that can reach you, like if they wanted to learn more? Um, visit the museum. Okay, so that's about it. And thank, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. This All is right. great.
All right, thanks a lot. All right.